Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand the case of the balancing in which several masses rotating in the same plane. And in this video, we are going to understand the analytical method to do the balancing of several masses rotating in the same plane. This is our shaft and on the shaft, we have two masses. Let us suppose this is M1 and this is M2 and it will make some angle with the axis of the rotation or you can say that axis of the shaft. So let us suppose this is a theta 2, suppose this is a theta 1. But from this view, the angles are not very much visible because this is a just an isometric view of the this complete figure. We have to make a, another diagram which is called a space diagram or you can say that we are going to make a side view of the shaft from which we can easily see the angles. So this is a simple figure and you can see this. This is a theta 1 and this is m1. This is m2 and this is theta 2. The radius of m2 is r2 and this is a r1. So r1 and r2 basically are the distances from the axis of the rotation towards the masses. Now let's see the steps of the analytical method. So step one is you have to find out the centrifugal forces. So you can see that whenever the shaft is rotating clockwise or anticlockwise, these masses will produce the centrifugal forces. So this is the F1. Let's say this is F1 and this is F2. So these are the centrifugal forces of these two masses. So we will see that that omega is constant over here because whatever the angular velocity of the shaft, that is the angular velocity of these masses. So we can neglect this angular velocities in the centrifugal forces and our forces will remain like this. So here we neglect the angular velocities of the shaft. So resolve centrifugal forces in horizontal and vertical and find their sums. So whatever the centrifugal forces coming due to these masses, you have to resolve that forces into horizontal and vertical component like this. So this is a horizontal component and this is a vertical component. And how to resolve it? It is very easy. So let us suppose this is a red mass M1 and this is a R1 and it makes an angle theta 1 here. So whenever we have a force in this direction F1, that means this is a F1 cos theta 1 and in the vertical direction this is a f1 sine theta 1 and what is f1 that is m1 r1 so here we have written here in the horizontal component m1 r1 cos theta 1 m2 r2 cos theta 2 if we have more than these masses we will write exactly like that in the same way vertical component we have m1 r1 sine theta 1 m2 r2 sine theta 2 for the second mass and so on. Next step would be magnitude of this resultant centrifugal forces. So whatever the vertical and horizontal components we have, we have to find out the resultant of that. And that resultant would be a scale of the horizontal component plus scale of the vertical component and root of that. So that is a magnitude of resultant centrifugal forces. After that, we have to find out the angle of that particular resultant. To find out that angle, we have a simple formula that is the ratio of the vertical component and horizontal component summations. Let us suppose this is our resultant. And we know that when we make an angle theta over here, this is let us suppose theta. So tangent theta is always whatever the vertical components and whatever the horizontal component. This is a formula for the tangent as per the trigonometry rules. Whatever the resultant is coming out, exactly opposite to that we have a balancing force like this so that is a simple balancing force which we can say that fc okay but in opposite direction you can see that result is towards this direction resultant in towards this direction but balancing we have to put in this way in other ways what i want to say here that you have to put some mass over here to make this system balance means this particular mass m3 is a balanced mass which is useful to make this complete system balanced which is done by the unbalancing of these two masses m1 m2 so this is the way to do the analytical method and in the analytical method there is no need to make the space diagram although 
but for your understanding i make this space diagram but in the next topic in which we are going to discuss the graphical method you have to make this space diagram okay now after that you can find out the magnitude of the balancing mass that is very easy with the help of this simple formula this is fc and fc is equal to whatever the resultant but in opposite direction and mass you have to find out and radius is always mostly given in the question that what could be the radius of this one or you can say the radius or the distance from the shaft axis so this is the analytical method let's understand this analytical method with the help of simple numerical so this is the question of analytical method of balancing so in this question four masses are given m1 to m4 the corresponding radius of rotation are also given and the angle between the successive masses are also given so let's understand this question with the help of figure so this is the first mass second third and fourth and the radius of rotations are given for first mass it is 0 0.2 0 0.15 0 0.25 and 0 0.3 now the angle between the successive masses are given. So between M1 and M2 it is 45 then 75 and 135. So these are the angles given. This is a horizontal line. With respect to this horizontal line you have to take all the angles. So for the first mass we have 45 that is a theta 2 and theta 1 is 0 because m1 do not make any angle with this horizontal line so theta 3 is 45 plus 75 that is 120 in the same way theta 4 is 255 so these are the angles with respect to this horizontal line so let's start the solution and we have to follow the steps involved in analytical method of balancing and first step says that you have to find out the centrifugal forces formula for the centrifugal forces m r omega square but omega square is the angular velocity and we know that angular velocity is constant to all the masses so we can neglect angular velocity so the centrifugal forces for all the masses are so these are the centrifugal forces after neglecting the angular velocity now just putting the values over here so m1 is 200 and r1 is 0 0.2 in the same way putting all the values in all the forces So these are the forces after calculating and putting the values of all the variables. Now next step is to find out the horizontal and vertical component of centrifugal forces. So for that we have a formula for horizontal component. Now just put the values of all the variables over here. So this is the equation after putting the values of the all the variables now just calculating it so after putting all the values your horizontal component will be 21.61 kilogram meter in the same way find out the vertical component so for the vertical component we have a formula So just putting the values of all the variables and by calculation we have a value. After putting all the values to the variables the vertical component for the forces is 8.5 kilogram meter. Now next step in the analytical method is to find out the resultant force. So this is the resultant formula and just putting the values of horizontal component vertical component. After putting the values of horizontal and vertical component, we got resultant as 23.2. And as per the analytical method, we know that whatever the resultant is, that is the balancing force in the system, but in opposite direction. So R is, is equal to 
balancing force fc is equal to mr and m is balancing mass and r is the radii of rotation of balancing mass so as per the question radii of rotation is given which is 0.2 so we can find out the balancing mass fc is 23.2 is equal to m into 0.2 after calculating we have a mass is equal to 23.2 divided by 0.2 that is equal to 116 kg so this is the magnitude of the balancing mass now you have to find out the position of this balancing mass. and to find out the position of the balancing mass you have a formula tangent theta and vertical component here is 8.5 divided by 21.61 that is so after calculating we have a 0.3935 and theta value would be a 21. 48. So this is the position of the angle theta which makes resultant with the horizontal line. So in the figure you have to understand this thing. Let us suppose our angle is here. This is a theta and this is a resultant which makes angle theta with this horizontal line. So this is a 21.48 degree but balancing force is just opposite to the resultant force and this is a balancing force FC. So you have to calculate this complete angle which as per this particular graph shows that that is 180 plus whatever the angle theta area. So our position of balancing force is 180 plus theta. It means 180 plus 21.48. We have a total angle is 201.48 degree. So this is the actual position of our magnitude force FC. So students, now you can understand the analytical method of balancing. I hope you understand this method. If you have any query, you can comment in the comment section. Thank you everyone.